Welcome to Persist Endure 2. And just like the first of the series, the name of the game is Muscular Endurance. It's eight rounds of the same exercise for 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest before you stop resting, just for 30 seconds before you go on to the next drill. So exactly what it sounds like, you're gonna be really fatiguing those local muscles, right? Whatever is being worked is worked a lot with not a lot of rest. But before we work, we always prime the body. So everybody, let's get down to the ground. Our first primer is gonna be a down dog to up dog twist. Let's go ahead and start actually in a child's pose. That's gonna set our track. Push our hips back, arms fully extended in front of us. Dig your toes into the ground. And that's gonna be what we press off of, the hands and the toes. Keeping the knees soft, lift the tailbone up to the sky, pressing your hands firmly into the ground. All right, from here, we're gonna pull our hips forward into a plank-like position, pull our hips towards our hands, shoulders down away from the ears. Look over the left shoulder, drop the right hip. Back to center. Look over the right shoulder, drop the left hip. That light rotation should really open up the front line. From here, pull the hips up and back, pressing the hands down to the ground, back into that down dog, lifting the tailbone up to the sky. Pull your hips forward into up dog, chest proud, shoulders down away from the ears. Look over the left shoulder, drop the right hip. Look over the right shoulder, drop the left hip. Back to center and press your hips up and back for downward facing dog. Again, last but not least, third repetition on each side. Pull your hips forward, chest proud, shoulders down away from the ears. Look over the left shoulder, drop the right hip. Look over the right shoulder, drop the right left hip. Back to center and back into downward facing dog. Okay, bring your knees down to the ground. Okay, weight on your hands. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place our right foot down on the ground, pointing out to the side. Lay our left leg across our body. Now the key here is this, if the hip is out of the line of the hand, pull it back in line with that left arm, okay? And then extend the right leg back. As we do that, drop your elbow on the left arm in line with the left hip. That's gonna be important. That's gonna load this hip as we go into the rotation of this next lounging sphinx drill. So we're gonna extend that back leg. Imagine drawing a bow to the ceiling with the right elbow. Exhale, turn over the rear leg and drive the elbow down to the ground. <sighs> Inhale, open. Exhale, rotate closed. Again, open this rear hip, point it open, and exhale, close it down, point it down towards the ground. Good, that's three repetitions on that side. Bring the right foot up, again, in that starting position. Use both hands to base out, switch to the opposite side. Right leg extends out, pull it back towards the hand. Again, elbow down in line with the hip, extend the back leg, draw the bow open, inhale, Exhale, close down the hip, close your chest to the ground. Open, inhale, exhale, close. Open, inhale, and exhale, close. Good, give me one more. Open, inhale, and exhale, close. Good, from there, we're gonna go ahead and bring our feet, our knees right underneath us, and we're gonna lay down with our hands extended out to each side. So. Legs fully extended back, lay on your tummy, hands out to each side. Look to the left, and in whatever direction we look, we're gonna pull that hand close to our chest in a push-up like position. So look to the left, bring the left hand to the shoulder. Bend the left knee, and then rotate your torso so that left foot lands on the ground on the opposite side of your body, pointing the knee up to the sky, looking up to the sky. Okay, good, inhale back to center. Bring the right hand in, extend the left arm, bend the right knee, and rotate over. Good, we're gonna alternate back and forth. Back to center, left arm in, extend the right arm, look over the left shoulder, rotate over. Good, switch, left arm extends, right arm in, bend the right knee, all the way over. One more on each side. Good, bring the left hand in, extend the right arm, bend the left knee, and rotate over. Good, last one. All the way flat, pull the right hand in, rotate all the way over. Awesome, good work everybody. Now, lay down flat, hands in push-up position. Bring your knees underneath your hips. Now we're gonna do the kneeling arm thread. So we're gonna have a wide base push-up position. Just imagine doing a wide push-up and that's kind of where we want our hands to be. That's gonna give us a lot of leverage to rotate our torso in the end position. We're gonna take our right hand, slide it underneath our left armpit, put the shoulder down between your knees and then try to stack your shoulders one on top of the other by pushing your left hand down into the ground. Retrace back, exhale the left arm through. Thread it through the needle and 
push down into the right hand to stack your right shoulder on top of the left. Back to center, inhale, exhale, thread through. Back to center, left arm threads through. Back to center, one more each side, right arm threads through. Back to center, last one, left arm threads through. All right, team. Good work. You're all primed. You twisted and turned. You know what? As we built strength through these programs, you built tension. And sometimes we need to unwind tension to increase performance. Everybody, we're ready for the first exercise. Today, we're starting with the Warrior Lunge Series. Everybody grab your bell and put it in position to start. All right, everybody, here we go. First of eight rounds. Remember, we're going to stick with the same exercise for all eight rounds. Ready in three, two, one. Go, all right, so I'm gonna hang out with Jesse here. Jesse's working this nice alternating warrior lunge. Actually, she's gonna be working one side, she's gonna step back, open the hip, close the hip, and step back up. As she does this, she's focusing on her breath with every rotational movement. Exhaling down, exhaling open, exhaling close, and up time. All right, that's one round down. I'm gonna go hang out with Chris now. Level two is a little more dynamic. It starts from this modified sumo position, toes out, ready? Go, round two. Now, with Chris and Grant, what they're doing is a single side drill. They're gonna make sure that they're loading the proper side. So he's rotating towards the loaded side, unloading towards the open side. Notice how much the hips rotate. He's pivoting on the toes in both directions, pivoting towards the heavy side and pivoting towards the close side. Time, all right, two rounds down. Now, Grant, he sophisticates the movement. Level three is always a little bit extra. Grant's a little bit extra too, ready? And go, round three. So he's gonna load to the heavy side and he's gonna drive all the way up to an overhead position using this corkscrew of the hips to drive the, hip, drive the kettlebell vertically. So it essentially is like a push press using the legs, but also through rotation. This is great for athletic movement. And time, okay, that's three rounds down already, team. We're gonna keep circulating. You guys are gonna keep working. Remember, alternate your sides every round. Ready in three, two, one, and go. So Jessie's on her left leg now. Again, focusing on her breath. I hear her breathing every time something's rotating. Down, open, close, up. Exhale, 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 up. Good. Each time you move, you're gonna exhale to increase efficiency of your movement. All right, and time. Okay, four down, four to go. All right, I'm gonna check out Chris. How's Chris doing? He's gonna be, what, on your right side now? Three, two, one, go. All right, I'm gonna hang out over here on the loaded side. Notice as he corkscrews down, he's gonna make sure that this knee is stable by driving to the outside edge of this foot. That's gonna keep his knee from driving outside the line of his foot. He's corkscrewing to the ground, so there's constant tension. And on the way up, he's digging his big toe into the ground, kind of like killing a cockroach, right? Time, all right, so. What we want to do is make sure that rear foot, as it pivots, that, that's actually driving down into the ground, loading the body and spiraling up. Ready? And go, round six. All right, Grant, same thing for you, buddy. So the base position, what you notice is the lower body's doing the exact same thing that Chris was doing. But what's happening now is he's really projecting that big toe into the ground, pushing down hard to allow for that spiral to accelerate the belt all the way up into the overhead position. Let's make sure that belt stays right over that shoulder. Good. Time, good, good, good. Everybody, great work. We're six rounds down. We have last two rounds to go. Last two, best two, ready? Three, two, one, work. All right, Jesse, how you doing over here, girl? Let me check it out. Still working that breath, still being efficient. That's all I wanna see. Every rep, getting better and better. Good, Chris, focusing on breath there. His breath cycle's a little bit longer. One exhale down, one exhale up. All right, last rep coming up. Time, all right. Hey, how many reps are you getting? Are you getting a consistent number of repetitions? Are you slowing down? Are you speeding up? Let's try to keep it even tempo. Ready? And go. Last but not least. Last round, best round. Last round, best round. Let's check out Grant's technique. What has he got going on over here? Good job, Grant. Good job. Nice. That spiral of the legs down, spiral of the legs up. We got about five more seconds. Good. Drive that elbow. Good. Keep that belt right over your shoulder. Time. All right, that's already eight rounds of that first drill. Guess what? Shake it out, put the bell down, relax, calm your breath down. Hey, 
we know where you felt that. Your legs felt it, right? No matter what variation you're doing, and guess what? You probably feel a little bit of those hips. We're gonna give you about 25 more seconds of rest. So calm your breathing, calm your mind, and get focused on the next drill, which is this row series. Again, level one, two, and three with the rows. You know what we're doing with rows. We've been doing this for a while now. 10 seconds, get ready for your rows. All right, I'm gonna hang out with Jesse. Five seconds of row. So you're gonna step back, and stagger stance row. Three, two, one, and go. All right, hips high, nice and long spine. Let's go ahead and get those hips a little bit higher by pulling that knee back. Perfect. I want as horizontal as possible in terms of this configuration. Nice long spine. All right, great work, great work, Jesse. Five more seconds. Here we go. Three, two, one. Time. Again, because we're doing one side at a time, every round we're going to switch sides. Now, with Chris, what we see is his stance is going to be bilateral, feet in line. Ready? And go. So even though he's going to keep his same base, he's just alternating the, the arm that's pulling. And notice the kettlebell stays in that 45-degree orientation again. You won't be able to see the numbers as clearly in the camera here, but the elbow and the numbers are all cambered at a 45-degree angle. Three, two, one. Time. All right, Grant, big peaks and valleys. We're talking about peaks and valleys. We're talking about all the muscle he carries. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. As he goes across his midline, touches the ground. You don't actually have to touch the ground, but Grant does a great job of retracting that shoulder as he pulls the elbow out. Take note of the orientation of the numbers on the kettlebell. You can see them clearly now because he's pulling the elbow directly out. The face of the kettlebell stays pointed directly forward. Time, all right, three rounds down. Three rounds down. Hey, we're almost to the halfway mark. Jesse, I'm gonna come pick on you again, girl. Three, two, one, go. And when I mean pick on her, I mean give her some love, right? So nice long spine, tailbone lifts up and back. Keep the ribs down. All the weight is heavy on that front leg. That back toe is pointed down into the ground, heel lifted directly up. We wanna keep the shoulder back, shoulder back, shoulder back. There you go. Give me another, another rep. Last one, time, all right. Awesome work, everybody, awesome work. I'm starting to see some, what is this wet stuff on the ground, Chris? I don't know what's going on here. Three, two, one, go, awesome. Nice long spine here again. Tailbone back, head forward, shoulders are slightly higher than the hips. This is something we wanna see all the time. Be in a mechanically sound position. I don't want you upside down. You're halfway through this round already. Keep focusing on driving that elbow back and up at a 45 degree angle for level two. Three, two, one, time. All right. Hey, Grant, I'm here with you, buddy. I know it's starting to work you. Uh, hey, what's this wet stuff falling off you too? I don't know. Three, two, one, go. All right, his chest stays proud. He's controlling rotation of the torso, making sure that he doesn't twist even though the shoulder moves forward, he pulls that shoulder back before the elbow drives up. All right, you're past the halfway mark here, team. Five more seconds. Give me a good couple reps. Last one coming up. And time. All right, four down, four to go. Shake it out, shake it out. All right, ready in three, two, one, work. Good work, good work. Awesome. This is round five. Nice, every rep should look just like the rep preceding. Keep that shoulder back, Jesse, you're doing an awesome job. Here we go, five more seconds. Three, two, one, time. All right, Chris, Chris, I'm back with you, buddy. What you got for me? Here we go, ready, in three, two, one, work. All right, chest taste proud, doing great work here. Chest proud, shoulders back. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, 10 seconds in, 10 seconds to go. Really using this post to stay strong. Awesome work. Hey, Grant, you're doing the same thing over here. Using that arm, staying strong, staying long with the spine. Time, all right. That was eight rounds of hard work. Hey, don't be surprised if it feels like your arm literally wants to fall off your body. Hey, we're gonna get set up for our bridge press next. So ideally at home, what you wanna do is set up the bell between your feet so that when you get down to the ground, you pull it from between your feet back to your sternum. Everybody go ahead and get set up for your bridge press. All right, so Jesse again, level one, Chris level two, Grant level three. All right, here we go, 10 seconds, get ready. All right, Jesse. You smiling? Give me a big smile. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, 
Go, bridge press. Good. Jesse's got level one of the bridge press. Now, the hips stay strong and up. The knees think about pressing forward to make sure that the hips don't hyperextend and get into the low back. As she's pressing, she's pressing up and down. She's thinking about pressing towards her belly button, which actually keeps the bell more vertical. Time. The big thing here is she doesn't want to press towards her face. She doesn't want to feel like the bell is going to fall on her face. Because guess what? You don't want to mess up the money maker. Ready? Three, two, one. Time. Go, go, go. Time in. All right. Now, Chris, he has an arc press. This arc press is taking the bell from side to side. And because we're moving it away from his midline, it actually increases the amount of rotational stability that is required to keep the hips from rotating, moving back and forth. One more rep. Time. Good. All right, got to visit Grant, Mr. Peaks and Valleys himself. Guess what? Over here, what we're doing is we're just adding a press. Ready? And go, round three. So we're squeezing. Actually, now to think about a press, think about a crush. He's crushing the bell by squeezing his palms together. What that's going to do is increase the amount of local stabilization and tension on his front line, his chest particularly. And he's pulling the elbow down through that tension the whole time. And time, all right, three rounds down, three rounds down, five rounds to go. All right, five seconds, shake it out. Big inhale, big exhale, three, two, one, work. Good, Jesse. Every time you squeeze the bell up to the top, lock out those tries. You got it. Good, own that top position. Don't skim through your end range. Own the end range, pull it back out of the sky every time. Five seconds, three, two, one. And time, all right, four down, four to go. Halfway through this drill, you probably got a little bit of upper body pump. Hey, if your glutes were sore before you started, you're probably feeling them right now. Ready? And go, round five. All right, Chris, again, I want this belt to stay stacked over the elbow. So when you push it off to the side, that other hand actually has to push it over the base elbow. Whichever elbow is floating to the side, the kettlebell stays directly vertically stacked on top of it. All right, three, two, one time, five down, five down, three to go. Everybody, you should be feeling that upper body really working here. Ready, in three, two, one, work. Time in, let's go, Grant. Again, Grant's gonna be moving a little bit slower because he's building so much tension. I want you to crush it harder, Grant. Crush it harder, that's gonna slow you down. There you go, that's the tension I wanna see. You should feel the effort in your body, almost shaking to stabilize that bell as it goes through the range of motion. Slow it down, squeeze it harder, time. All right, last two rounds, best two rounds. Whatever you've been able to do up to this point has just been practice. These last two rounds are what count. So finish strong, ready, go. All right, Jesse, come on. All the way to the top, own that range. Squeeze the bell at the top, and pull it down. Nice, out of the sky. All right, Chris. You're using that arc press, pulling the elbow out to the side, pushing the bell on top of the hand, elbow. You wanna stack the hand on top of the elbow every time. Last rep, time. All right, Grant, remember, I want you to squeeze. I know it's the last round. I know your things are tired, everything's tired. I want you to crush that bell. Ready, three, two, one, go. Time in. Again, Grant has to squeeze that bell. Squeezing that bell is gonna activate every muscle on the front of his body, from his shoulders to his pecs. And as he's moving the bell, he's working against that tension, pulling the elbow down and out to the side. Five more seconds, Grant, come on. Pull against that tension. I see you working now. All right, time. All right, hey, guess what? That's eight rounds of the bridge press. All right, get up, shake it out. Big deep breath in, big slow breath out. All right, everybody, recover. From the bridge press, we have our swing series. So level one of the swing, chest swing, two-hand swing, alternating single arm swing. Hey, we're gonna start our swing series from a tall neutral position rather than from a hike, which is standard in a lot of systems. And this is just a stronger position for you to start from. Hey, everybody can stand and plank. This is gonna keep the weight near our center of mass over our base of support, which is our feet. All right, everybody ready? Three, two, one. Go! All right, for the chest swing, Jessie has her shoulders rolled back, chest is proud, hips stay high into the back position. She drives those hips to a tall, standing, neutral position. 10 seconds in, halfway through, fighting for this chest open position. Actually, her mid back's probably working just as hard as her hamstrings. Last rep, time! All right, good work. Chris has the two-handed swing. So again, we're gonna start from this tall, neutral position from a deadlift. Ready? In three, two, 
One, go. He's going to drive his hips back, drive those hips forward explosively, keeping the hands relatively loose on the belt to avoid muscling it up. You want to keep making sure that all the work is actually from the lower body here. It doesn't matter how high the bell goes. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and keep the bell a little bit lower. There we go. So the tempo of the bell, the bell swing is a very important thing. You want to keep everything loose. Time. Arms are loose. The hips explode, right? So you're swinging the bell, almost like a wrecking ball at the end of a chain. Ready? Three, two, one, go with Grant. He has the alternating single arm swing. So he has to tra transition the hand switch at the top. So just like with Chris, the bell is floating. It's weightless at the top of the swing. And that's when he has an opportunity to change from right hand to left and left hand back to right. Same hip explosion. Again, that timing is the big critical element. Time. So timing and time, there you go. Three rounds down. Jesse, I know you're feeling it. You're probably feeling your upper body just as much as your lower body, but really get those hamstring stretch. Ready, go. Round four. All right, this is gonna be the halfway mark after this. The nice thing about this chest swing is, if you notice, everybody else has to work at the same tempo. Gravity's dictating the tempo of the swing. Hey, Jessie's in control of her tempo. So as she's learning her structural refinement, she can slow down to speed up as she so wishes. And time, four down, four to go. Uh, guess what, I'm starting to see, and I'm starting to feel a lot of heat coming off those hammies. Ready, three, two, one, go. Every time you stand up, you stand tall. Make sure that you're not arching your back. No matter what variation of swing you're doing, you don't wanna extend your low back. You wanna think about fighting to get as tall as you can. Head back over shoulders, over hips, and over feet. Give me a couple more reps, five more seconds. Keep the kettlebell high in the triangle, high into your crotch. Time, awesome, Grant. Now, you're up next, buddy. I'm here with you, okay? That's five rounds down. We have three rounds to go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. All right. So as he gets into his backswing, notice how high the bell is in his backswing. You want your forearm married to your belly, and the hips are up high. The kettlebell swings up high. We don't want the kettlebell swinging down by the knees. We want it high in the triangle, as high up by the crotch as possible. Give me another rep. And time, six rounds down, last two rounds. These rounds are the ones that count. So you've been practicing up to this point. Hold your technique, hold your form for these last two rounds. Ready? And go. Good, Jesse. Let's overspeed these last two rounds. Good. So just like I said, Jesse can increase your tempo if she so wishes. I want you to double speed. Don't hold at the top. Go. Double time. Go double time. Double time. All right, 10 seconds to go. Come on, keep it going. Good. Relax those arms, Chris. Don't bend them, just relax them. There you go. Three, two. One time, good work, good work. All right, last round, last round. Shake it out, recover your breath. Last 20 seconds, three, two, one, go. Last round, best round, best technique of the day, best structure. Keep that nice spine integrated, chest a little higher, Chris. Chest, there we go. We wanna make sure we don't get completely horizontal. We keep the shoulders just slightly higher than the hips. All right, five more seconds. Grant, hips a little higher, you got this. Stretch out those hammies. Last rip. Time, all right, from the swing. Now we have one more drill. It's the push press. So we're gonna coordinate all of our lower body power into an upper body press. Jessie's got level one, she gets two hands on the bell. She gets to control it with two limbs. Chris is gonna take that from two to one, and guess what, Grant's got to do something fancy. He's gonna push press into a reverse lunge. It's gonna take a little more coordination than the rest of the drills, but guess what? I think he's ready for it. All that muscle got to move too. All right, 10 seconds, slow your breathing. Make sure you know what your assignment is. If anybody has any questions, you know I'm here for you. Three, two, one. All right, get busy, y'all. Good, level one, push press. Two-handed push press. Notice she's recovering into her legs. It's a soft knee bend, driving the feet down into the ground, accelerating the belt up into the overhead position. That's the goal here. Using the lower body to assist the upper body efficiently pressing the bell overhead. Three, two, one, time. All right, Chris, you fancy brother. Yeah, Chris has to clean the bell up into the rack position on one side and then the other side, alternating sides per round. Ready, go. Good, round two. Push press, good. I want a little more explosion. A little bit more explosion up. Use those legs, Chris. Good. And then you press only hard enough so the bell doesn't bounce at the top. The other thing I want to get is the elbow down to the ribs every time for a strong rack. Good. Own that full range of motion. Three seconds to go. One more rep. And time. All right. Grant, hey, buddy. I'm here with you, man. I know this has been a good one for you. Got to coordinate all that muscle moving. Three, 
two, one, go. Okay, round three. Notice, he's doing what Chris is doing in terms of initiating the movement, but guess what? He has to receive that load in that bottom of a lunge position. So by the time the kettlebell is pressed directly overhead, he's already stepping back into that lunge. It's a nice coordinated movement, and guess what? Coordination is a big part of developing time, sound, strength, skills, right? Movement skills are part of building a strong platform for expressing strength. Ready, go. Round four. Good, Jesse. Really good work. Using those legs, pressing overhead. Ideally, what we're going to see is these arms lined up with her ears overhead when she's in the overhead position. We want the ribs to stay down. We don't want her back to arch. So at home, make sure you keep your core tight. If you need to, you can soften your knees even at the top time to make sure you don't arch your low back. Okay? Hey, guess what? The same rules apply when we go to one hand. Don't arch your back to get it overhead. Ready? And go. Round five. So as Chris presses overhead, as he push presses, the front of his body stays engaged. The same rules apply from level one, two, and three. He's letting the knees push forward, driving the feet down into the ground to drive the bell up. The key here is the shoulder stays down away from the ear, and the bell doesn't bounce off his forearm at the top. Time. All right, five rounds down, three rounds to go. I'm gonna check out Mr. Grant over here. Shake it out, Grant. You ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, same thing. Notice at the top position, there's no bounce on the bell. We don't wanna use so much power that the bell goes off the forearm because what goes up must come down and we don't want the bell impacting our forearm. Just like when we taught the cleans, we wanna minimize impact all the time. It's unnecessary. It doesn't get you any better training effect. Time. Good work. Last two, best two. Last two rounds coming up. I know you're feeling it. Muscular endurance, right? You're doing the same drill over and over and over. Ready? And go. 20 seconds of work. Come on. Finish strong. Last two rounds. Best two rounds. Best technique. Hold your structure. You got it, Chris. Keep it going. Grant, looking smooth, brother. Looking smooth. Getting better with every rep. Getting better with every round. Five seconds to go. Breathe. Exhale into the descent. That's gonna help you keep your balance. Time, last round coming up. Last round coming up. Shake it out, slow your breath, slow your thoughts. Know what you gotta do. Three, two, one, go. All right, last round, best round. Last round, best round. Use those legs, Chris, push with your legs. Drive, there you go. A little more acceleration with the legs, a little less push with the top. Make sure it ca you catch it soft at the top. There you go. Just the right amount of strength, just the right amount of power. Five seconds. Grant, you're coordinating that effort great, man. Very efficient. And time. All right, wow. You guys worked hard. Hey, you at home, you're probably feeling that too. Everybody here is sweating up a storm. And you know what? If you're not, I don't know what you did, but you didn't do what they did. Uh, Jesse, I haven't, I haven't seen Jesse this glossy before. I love it. I love it. She's working hard. Hey, guess what? You're done with this workout. Get ready for the cool down. Great work.